very few kids, and ours were five and six years old. And uh, now it's just burgeoning, and it's just wonderful to see little ones running around, running on up to folks with their jackets. And I'm Richard of Rapin, and I followed my wife throughout all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Cedric and Allian were on the phone when we started. And I believe Roderick was the next friend. <laughs> and that's been a long time. Yeah, Allian was my little girl. She was the person that I was interested Okay. And I believe we saw her at our very first event. She has come back. Is it now back in work? Uh, I was knighted in 1985 uh, and am a member of the Order of the Chalice. And now we've got a grandson who's in the SCA with us. Speaking of grand sort of things, <laughs> parents, stuff like that. <coughs> I was thrilled, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure most of you don't know me. Thanks, <laughs> John. And I joined the SCA in 1973. Yeah. It's times like this where I'm feeling <laughs> I've been in the SCA for 40 years. I've Quick, been... raise your hand if you're not 40. If you're not 40, raise your hand. Good Lord of my <laughs> seven years come this June and I have been king I have been king twice which basically means that I was dumb and lucky <laughs> to a king. Yeah. I was prince for a week the first time. No, I was prince for a prince for a day, day. 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 four hours. <laughs> prince for a week that, that doesn't have nearly the ring as prince for a day, John. Come on. Well yeah but I highly recommend it for anything. <laughs> Because they figure you don't know what you're doing, so you can get away with all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and uh, I have watched the wonderful tapestry that is this kid. <laughs> I also know all the dirt on all the people that are there. <laughs> Just a warning. Guys. Are you and going to tell I stories? The photographs to prove. Anything oh. I have to say. <laughs> 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 you know all the dirt. <laughs> Very dirty. <laughs> I'm Elena McShee, and um, I've been in the SCA since 1985. My D and D group, um, with a large group of us, we all went to a place called the Yankee Peddler in Knoxville, <coughs> Tennessee, and. Uh, we saw the little flyer sign saying that there was a demo. Um, so we went to the demo, and uh, you know we were all, I mean, so a couple of folks had actually been looking for the SCA. They didn't know where to find it yet, but they'd seen some in some national publication, which is like a men's magazine. I don't want to mention what it was. But they had heard about it, so they knew there was such a thing, and they were looking for it. And then when they saw the flyer, you know, we took our whole, we loaded up in a big van, and we took our D&D group up, and, uh, and uh, it absolutely was just a, Everything that, that we wanted out of a, of a, out of a, a group of people, um, they showed us the fighting, and the fighting for me, you know, there's a lot of the SCA that I love now that has nothing to do with the fighting, but absolutely it was all about the fighting when I first joined. Um, and I come from a basketball background, and to me, SCA fighting and basketball are so much closer than people would ever, you know, think about. But in basketball, you can go play to the park and you can play one-on-one -on -one all day long. Or you can get into groups and you can play you can play team basketball. Well, the SCA was exactly that for me. I could go be one-on-one -on -one, and then I could go be on a team. 
Um, and so it just met everything that I wanted out of, you know, but then it was, it was much cooler than that because we, you know, we were living all those fantasy books. And honestly, for me, it was fantasy when I joined. It's become history over the, over the years, but, but my love of the SCA started with a love of fantasy. Um, and the SCA's been a very good place to live with that background. And I think it actually still is. I'm so thrilled how much more of an actual historical group we have become over the years. But you know, there's still a place for people who just want to play. So, I've been king a couple times, and uh, uh, when I joined, all of these people were in. Um, Roz was sort of the de facto ruler area. I mean, we had our Baroness, but it was Roz who did everything that got stuff going and, you know, kept the fire guys in line and, um, and fed us. You know, I, I've, I've gone upstairs, been in her workshop, gone upstairs and been fed. So, um, and then not long after I was in the SCA, uh, all three of these people were on the throne. And His Grace was kind of a contemporary over in Middle Tennessee, and I was in East Tennessee. Um, and so he was one of the first people that I just had as that, you know, my peer group benchmark. You know, I, I had to try to keep up with him as best I could in the fighting realm of things. Um, all of these people have done some amazing, wonderful things in the SCA and for Reyes. And uh, you know, like I say, John was a legend when I joined. And though they had been in the SCA very long, their excellencies was a huge part of my early SCA life. They were, they were one of the first crowns to come and be around uh, in my group that I got a lot of exposure with. So I really got a, a, an early understanding from them of, of what I thought was courtly behavior and grace and, and, and compassion. And, and they didn't just play it, they lived it. So you know, all these people have been significant influences over me. And now I try, whenever I get a chance, to, to be an influence when I came for some of the newer people. So that's my little story. Rob, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Robert Glenn Duvall, and I started in Montgomery, Alabama in 19, late, very late. I just barely made 1980, so, what, 32 years or whatever. Uh, my, uh, my dear, dear friend who I've known now more than 35 years, uh, some of you may know him, the Honorable Lord Baron Vladimir Arkhangelsk, I keep trying to say Harkonnen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, showed, me, uh, showed me the group, and wasn't too impressed at first, but then I realized you got to hit people with sticks, and then, you know, and there were chicks, so I was like, okay, <laughs> sticks and chicks, I'll do that. Uh, I'm a little different from the rest. Uh, most of the people here have been whole bodies. Like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> most, of, most of the august personages you see here have been home bodies. Uh, I traveled a, a good bit, so I've lived in four kingdoms. I was knighted in the Outlands. Uh, I've fought in about a dozen of them, and uh, so I have a, a, a pretty wide range of experience, and there's been times I've wanted to shoot just everybody I could get my hands on and get out of the SCA, but quite frankly, the one thing that has kept me, and by the way, brought my wife in, has my kids in, now has my grandchildren in, is the folks that I see every time I, that's why I'm here at many here, because of the folks that I love to hear so, it's, the, it's kind of a place for me, you know, I guess you'll have to just bury me out of it. So, there you go. So, <clears throat> we, uh, we have no formal program, really, and uh, we're, we're the epitome of loose and flexible thinking out of the box organizations around here. So, let's do this this way, unless their majesties would like to do something, and I'm going to do this first. Your majesties, your highnesses, do you have a question? What would you like to know first about the rich tapestry? <laughs> you know you can direct it in general or to an individual. Please take a picture. I'd like to know how, uh, since we're talking the history of Meridius, I'd like to know how Meridius got started, since we have at least two people who were here when, when Meridius became a principal. Okay. Okay, Meridius. Back when we were becoming a principality, there was a gentleman that you will never meet. His name was Patrick Vistar. Patrick Vistar buttonholed me in some meeting somewhere because he was on Button. the panel. Button hole. Button. <laughs> 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 well, a little louder, you're great. Um, <laughs> by the way, in the early days of the SCA, it was a much wilder place. <laughs> I'm not a name for Prince Powell. 
best name ever. You're going to love this name. Because he was on some panel about organizing the entire thing. And none of us had really thought about our name. We knew we didn't want, we had the West Kingdom, we had the East Kingdom, we had the Middle Kingdom, and we went, we want something a little more imaginative than a direction. <laughs> <laughs> agree on it, and here comes Patrick, he says, I've got the best name ever, ever. This name sings. This name is glorious. I go, what is This name will make him weep. This, what, what is it? Well, this name came to me in a dream. I went, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> what is this wonderful name? He says, are you ready? I've been ready. <laughs> Redlands. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, okay. And I said, that's the stupidest name. <laughs> Patrick, it's a stupid name. <laughs> you can tell what Patrick was because you hear people in the back going, that's a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at this for about two weeks, and all of a sudden, at an event, I cannot tell you what it was, except that it was in South Downs at the time, this committee had got together, and suddenly Patrick announced, we have to send in our papers next week. And we had to have a name. I suggest read it. <laughs> And literally, all the people sitting around went, that's a stupid name. <laughs> we have to have a name. Yes, we've got to have a name on, on, on the forms that just mail them in. And we have a thought one, and I think Redlands is great. We think Redlands is stupid. So literally, in a circle there, somebody said, well, we've got to have a name, we've got to have a name. It's not Redlands. <laughs> <laughs> and a woman said, well, I've got a name that's part of our household name. It's Alderlund. <laughs> and we went, well, that isn't as stupid as Red. <laughs> and then somebody said, well, is this permanent? I mean, it's fixed to be. I think they'll let us change it later. We've, we've got to have something to put on the form. We can't just write, like, George. <laughs> okay, Alderman, what does it mean? What's sort of Red Lund's term? <laughs> Dwayne. Oh, 
Dwayne. Dwayne. And I think it was, it was just Sir Spin who stood up and said, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be known as a knight of Dwayne. <laughs> Does everybody know what kingdom we were a part of when we split yeah. off? Yeah. 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 Which we mispronounced until somebody came here from there. We all <laughs> said. What was that? We thought it was that. No, we didn't know until somebody actually came here on a bus yeah. and went, Hi, I'm from Eight. You're from where? Eight. You mean it's Eight? Yes, it is. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's what we say, too. <laughs> Here in Alder London. <laughs> A.K.A. Redlands. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Do you have anything you'd like to ask the huh? family? That was oh, wait, just the name. Ros was going to tell Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Sorry, Ros. Uh, when, I, when I joined the SCA, we were Principality of Perugues, and we were Principality of Edinburgh. And... In fact, when I got my award of arms, I got it from Tom the Traveler, King of Cape Bell. And, uh, but I think very quickly after I joined, we, we became a kingdom uh, in 1978. Yes. So I had, I had been in like a year and a half or something like that when, uh, when we were made a kingdom. And I was at the first crown list, which is where I got my and because, you know, we didn't get kings very often from Arizona, which is where he was from, uh, he met a whole bunch of people, lords and ladies, that night. I think there were about 25 of us. And uh, John the Bear Killer won that uh, crown list, so, yes, so he was our first king. And I went to the first coronation, which was in Jessup, Georgia, and it is, you know, it seems to be kind of a thing in the southern kingdoms that your first coronation has to have some disaster before. <laughs> uh, when Trimeris broke up, broke off from us and had their first uh, coronation, there was a hurricane. <laughs> when Glenavon broke off from us and had some of their first events, they had a hurricane. <laughs> oh, we just had a blizzard. Yeah. In Jessup, Georgia. In Jessup, Georgia. In southern Georgia, where they never, ever have snow. In, it, was, it was February, but they never, ever have snow there. And it, there was a blizzard. And this was held at like a, a county fair site. Now, for some unknown reason, I must have had some blinding insight. And I don't know what made me do it, but I said, you know, it's going to be at this lake. There's no real privacy. Everybody's going to be throwing sleeping bags on the floor. I think we should get a motel room. I was married at the time, and so we got a, I got a, made reservations and had a hotel. And when the temperature dropped to 28 degrees, I was so glad. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, we did have a blizzard at our first coronation in Jessup, Georgia, where everybody was wholly inappropriately dressed for the weather because it was really, really cold. Speaking of which, uh, his Grace John the Bear Killer and his wife Jane Fowler were supposed to be here with us, but Jane fell ill, so they couldn't make it, and uh, that's a shame because John has a lot of the answers and a lot to answer for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when Roger's Freudian slips there, when she said actually when uh, she said she said, meant to say break off, and then she said broke up. <laughs> Honestly, when kingdoms split, it's a lot like a breakup. It is. Um, it is. I, we probably didn't have the same thing with Avonbell because we didn't know who they were. Yeah, they were but with Trimeris, way over there. When Trimeris became a own kingdom, there was a lot of weird animosity from them uh, having broken up with us, kind of thing. And even when Glen Oppen, you know, recently in our experience, there was a lot of folks that you know, were like, "Well, we're so glad to be rid of you," and we're like, "Huh? What?" <laughs> Um, it's just a natural thing, I think, sometimes in, in growth. That, it is. Those kind of feelings. But, uh, but it was, I thought it was a funny kind of slip there. <laughs> break up. Well, it is. I mean, it really is kind of like a break up. A lot. Because you've had this really close relationship with those people down there. And it's like, 
Primaris wasn't even a principality when he became a kingdom. That was something that happened later. And let me tell you, driving from Knoxville, Tennessee to Tampa, Florida for a weekend event, I did it a lot. It's a long day of drive. I was glad I was young because I don't think I would want to do it now. But uh, the nice thing about being older in the SCA though is I have more disposable income than I did. Now I can fly. <laughs> Gas was 30% yeah. down. <laughs> 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 well, some minimum wage was a dollar set. <laughs> 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 or may not get there. Yes. <laughs> there. I got, we've all had, I think, in the early days, a lot of cars not quite making it there, not quite making it back. For a while, we decided that any time Eric of Telemark went anywhere with us, our car broke down. It was his fault. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, I think a lot of us were college students when we joined. So, you know, we had a lot of spare time because oh, we cut class. But, uh, <laughs> but we didn't have very much money. So, we did. Uh, <laughs> I just got to understand, 40 years ago, we were the scruffiest bunch of cabalogy. <laughs> I have a picture of Duke Orlando Cavalcante, the legend, fighting in a, he's in a body stocking. <laughs> Splotches of paint on him. He does not have gloves on. He has no shoes on. <laughs> he is fighting with two sticks that don't even have crossbars. He has on a Freon can that has foam rubber horns going. <laughs> 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 he would deny that. Huh? So yes. He would deny that. He would. Uh, uh, Mr. Lay set everything up. Yeah, right. Uh, he, I've got a picture of you somewhere in some. And that's because. <laughs>
All right, full equipment. All right, full oh, equipment. Yeah. A belt that may or may not protect your kidneys. <laughs> some knee pads, pads, some elbow pad, <laughs> maybe something on your hands, a stick of some description. I know, a hex handle. Right. A half inch, a half inch thick plywood heater hose rim shield that weighs a ton. And a Freon pan. A Freon pan and, and some tennis shoes. <laughs> and a cup. Because you're oh, okay. you more full contact. You can get from the tip of your toe to the top of your head. And the one piece of equipment you always had, you can see in the old pictures. We may be wearing a t tunic and bougies, but we have breeze from hell. <laughs> And then grieves this thing. <laughs> hey, who, who all's ever seen a Freon can in any I sort of context? One. Have you seen a helmet? Raise your hand if you've seen a Freon can helmet. Yep. All right, how many of you have worn one in combat? <laughs> wow, well, that's more than I thought. The nice thing is you can knock the heads out of it. I actually watched Francois actually crumble one around somebody's head once with hitting him with a stick. He wasn't calling his blows so good, Francois decided to take him to school. And he hit him once, it's like, hit him twice, it's like, a, and it just crumpled. <laughs> they had to take the Freon can off of his head so that Francois could put his foot on the helmet to pull his sword out. <laughs> I'm not exactly. <exaggerating. laughs> we can go was so young that when a guy from Birmingham, and y'all, you might remember this, you're Mac the Crazed. <laughs> when, a guy, when a guy from Birmingham went out to Arizona and came back with a spun top helmet that was not very well made, they wrapped a piece of metal around the bottom part of it and shoved it into here and left a little tiny slit and another little tiny opening up here and then put bars all over it, like some sort of crazy madman sort of thing. But it had a spun top hood. We all just stopped. Uh -oh. <laughs> we all had on cans. Flat top cans. <laughs> what do you want to know? What do you want to know? We get look, we sit up here and tell stories all day long, but what do you want to know? What happened with the balance mean though? <laughs> <laughs> it off of it a lot. <laughs> And somehow managed not to break anything because we fall off like a uh, uh. <laughs> and and one swing was about all we could get before we went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, but we had a we had fun. We never even considered the thought that yes, we can actually like break everybody in our bodies doing this because you go well, that's what they did. Health <laughs> <laughs> food? Uh, I saw this movie. <laughs> I know that the man who is responsible for this is not here, but I was hoping that somebody else could field this comment. Who's responsible for the uh, conjured flag of Dixie <laughs> as our kingdom that was colors? That Francois. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the stars and stars. stars. The stars. The stars. The stars. The stars. The The black. The black. The black. Cathal is still alive and well in Atlanta, in case you want to look him up on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> Run out of Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> on a rail or a balance beam. Around, around when did the society start going from plan to being a historical reactor? I'd say. Next you know, week? <laughs> I really did 
enjoy the historic part of it, but I also enjoy a lot of the fantasy part of it. I think we started becoming a live, living history group sometime in the 80s, and it was, it's not that there weren't any attempts before that. When, when I joined the SCA, there was, period cooking was something that didn't happen very often, and I, I lived in a group where actually attempts were made. There was one, at the time, one period cookbook came out in 1974, it's still available, it's called All to the King's Taste, to the King's Taste. I have a copy of it now, and it's probably the oldest actual medieval period cookbook out there, and it's actually based on really good research, but it doesn't have very many recipes in it, so our feast is really just edited after a while. But now, you know, you look up, well now you can Google shit. <laughs> Uh, and, and the answer to the question is going to be, it's going to depend on who you ask. Yeah. You know, because some people, you know, probably got in 30 years ago thinking they were doing the historical thing and, and doing it as much as possible. And some people come in today, you know, they've just seen The Hobbit or whatever, and, and that's what, you know, so. Yeah. And that's the great thing about the SCA is it. We are inclusive. I, well, the, the good and the bad is that sometimes we try to be all things all people. But we are an inclusive organization. We have a very broad time spectrum. Much you know, larger than most right now. Much, much larger. I mean, pre 16th, pre 17th century is what Papora says. So say much larger so, than even we defined before. Yeah, <laughs> Papora says pre 17th century, and that's a lot of time. You know. We cover about a thousand years. Yeah. So <laughs> you can, and we've got all those people in court at the same time. You know, we have a lot of very anachronistic stuff that happens in the SCA, but um, I think we became more interested in historical reality as more materials became available to us. I think there's a real correlation between those two things. I was going to say, Ross, I think the time frame that we mentioned earlier, too, that's, that's kind of what I remember. Huge bust, yeah. I mean, it was Is it? Uh, yes, it, it, as far as, especially, you know, fighters. Um, you know, the guys on the field trying to do stuff that's with the stuff. Or, or at least covered up. Yeah. yeah. Was it the rise of the internet, you think? That I think it helped. Probably. That was more in the 90s. Hell. I mean. No, not, well, not for that. But I'm just <laughs> 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 it, it, it was actually no, looking for information. Really nice. Information had been out there, but people tended to, as you get older, you start going, well, this is cool. But and part of this fan, you know, where a fan can just for so long before you go, you know, no matter what I do this thing, it still looks like a free on <laughs> Well, that's the way. You what get you more got? people in, more people who are talented. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, Oh, no, I have another question. Go ahead. Good. I was just going to ask who each of you looked at your first five or so years in the SCA as your Meridian hero? The people who you aspire to be. Alan on, address that a little bit, but I'd like to hear. Alan, I guess to go first. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had these. I had two things. I had like you know this, the realistic heroes of you know I Richard and Ellen came to our you know a couple of our events around our area and they were very much the realistic heroes of wow I, you know and I don't want to be sad I, I want to aim for that I want to I want to try to be like that if I can and actually I'm still trying to be like that it's outside of my perhaps even who I am to be some of who they are but it's goals that I have for myself as a person and they were very much a big part of that and, and then this sort of crazy outside of the world for better or for worse. And it's definitely sometimes been for worse. John Bearkiller has been my, oh my God, you can do anything you want and get away with it. <laughs> you know, as long as you say you're sorry. As long as you say you're sorry and then work your hands off, you know, at other points in times. And, and that's kind of in a way been a bad influence. He's been a huge influence on me though. Um, without a doubt. And, so we know and the he was so bigger than life when I met him. I'm they're like, you know, like, oh John the Bear Killer's here and I'm like, where? Behind the little fat guy? <laughs> <laughs> and in many ways it's <laughs> and then the little fat guy teleported and hit some guy four or five times in a tiny little gap and I'm like <gasps> <laughs> you know so they, they've been on the again, you know, my heroes are in that two sort of spectrum thing, that sort of crazy fantasy hero, and then something realistic, wonderful, and warm, and a great, great, um, you know, that have been more more personal, you know, like, you know, I don't think John the Bear Killers ever styled up to me and said, you're screwing up, and, and, you know, I care about you, so do better, but they have. 
<laughs> John? <laughs> My turn. Did you have heroes? Or, you know, since you were like a, a fighter one week, a squire the next week, a knight the next week, and a king for a week. I don't have so much a hero as I have a very close and dear friend and the person who's the reason I'm sitting here. Uh, Mr. Spin of Andalabla. Uh, he was the first person I ever contacted. He was the energy behind so much of what we did. He was the first man to actually build Scratchville Helm in his kingdom because he wanted to. And he felt that they were needed. He got patterns from a Sir Polydor that was uh, in the middle of the country. Uh, Dave Matthews, uh, who's one of the most talented and energetic men that I've ever met, is, has gone a long way to making us what we are today through so many influences of time. Because he was the one who said, if we're going to play this game, we ought to look like at least something like what we're playing today. He was always there with an idea. Sometimes they were airborne ideas. And luckily, we enough that we could look at it and say, that's a hairbrained idea. <laughs> He'd usually try it anyway. And he would, yeah. But for every hairbrained idea he had, he'd have one that sticks with us even today. I don't think all of you or all of us really realize how much influence that man has had on at least this region of his head. And if you ever get to see him, and he shows up once in a while, uh, it would do you well to talk to him because he was in before me, and he knows even more stuff about a lot more stuff than I ever will. And he's one of the major reasons that we're all here right now. He was founding Baron of Southern. First social principality when he gave it up. And uh, first in so many things. And uh, he's quite a guy. And we all have a lot to thank him for, whether we know it or not. Hello? Um, we got started. We were in South Mountain. I guess we were blessed to be surrounded by giants. <laughs> like you, John? No, 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 no. I've been a lot of things here. But let me tell you, a giant is not. <laughs> He's the tops of people's minds. It's all in your perspective. Oh, well, yeah. But, um, but uh, Duchess Rondelin was my peer. So I was part of their household, we were part of their household, and, you know, it was just wonderful because there wasn't just, you know, the, the encouragement and the, the help that you can kind of get it established as far as, you know, helping piece crowding and autocratting and, and all, but there was that kind of questioning mind, um, you know, with the bees and the candle making, and just, it was just a wonderful time, and we had um, Master Thomas the Wordsmith there, we had... Um, Ben William Culp, but I mean, we were just, it was just such an exciting time, and, and as I said, it was just so many people to inspire us, that we were just so blessed. As, as my wife said, we did start the South Downs, and I guess technically we were like second generation, because there already were a ton of people there. I think they all saying was you couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a pier. <laughs> uh, knights, every fighter practice loaded with knights. Uh, one person I remember really being impressed with uh, was Orlando. <laughs> he was flowery. He could say the right things. It was almost magical. Uh, he looked really great. He had a Helm that actually had deer antlers on it one time, but he, he didn't move up from the foam stuff. <laughs> uh, but it was a great show and, and so nice. And, uh, I do remember him very specifically. But like I said, being in South Downs with the influence of John and Savog. <laughs> That's an influence, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it was never a dull minute. <laughs> Um, Sir Francois Dupont was probably my biggest inspiration in this year. I think he was at the second event I ever went to, and I think I stood there with my mouth hanging open. He was, at that time, especially incredibly beautiful to look at. 
but he was also absolutely the epitome of chivalry. He is to this day the most chivalrous man I've ever met. Um, it's not that he was without flaw, but he truly believed in the precepts of chivalry. He was also one of those people on the field that could like teleport from here to here. You kind of go, it was, he moved really fast. It was amazing. But uh, he was kind, and he was patient, and he really epitomized a lot of the chivalric ideals. And, it, and he did it every single day of his life, at every event that he ever went to. I remember we used to have really kind of the Confederate battle flag. That was the Meridian War flag. And used to. Used to. Well, yeah, it's kind of a used to. And he took it to. Yeah, it was. It actually was. And he took, we took it up to like Appendix or some big war up north. And it, and it was pointed out to him by some Yankees that some people are offended by this. He was horrified that he had done something that would offend him. And it got changed. It got changed immediately because, and it was explained to him why, and, that kind of, and he was just, he was genuinely upset because he had done something that would be that kind of offensive to other people. He was, and it, it got fixed. A Confederate flag in Pennsylvania, and they were offended? <laughs> 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 you read that history. <laughs> Uh, I, until his health got bad, every event that he went to, he served at peace because that's what knights do. And he was just really an example for me. And I hope that I have done things that will be When I first got to SCA, I was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And we were in the middle of nowhere. And there were a couple of gentlemen there who had done some SCA, and they kept going on about John the Bear Killer, John the Bear Killer, John the Bear Killer. And I was like, well, okay. So I named myself Gareth LeBrew, and I said, let's see what happens. <laughs> of course not. I was just that kind of a <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Still go from zero to red egg by 2.9 seconds. So <laughs> don't you forget it. <laughs> Redlands! Redlands! I do it every day. <laughs> so, um, first time I fought with John was at an Irish fair. I think it was um, my first six or seven months in the SCA. And we get down and we're in the finals, and, and uh, he kills me, and then I get lucky enough to kill him. And as John was wanting to do in those days. He was day tripping, come to fight, and wanted to go. So he said, Hey, Layton Fell needs a local champion. He wins. I'm like, Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so John, John was a real big influence. Uh, the local guy, Patrick De La Shaw, uh, not one of the two guys who made me sick of hearing John's name, but Pat, was, uh, Pat Shaw was a, a great guy. Most people probably don't know him, remember him. But uh, a little small left handed guy. And uh, I remember we go to a uh, second event. Uh, we're fighting over in Cookville, and as the doors got in the van, and they had a home game tournament, and it was a thing, the thing where they drew out a 10-foot circle, one man with a weapon, one man with a shield. My first yep. event. Ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was like, yeah, must, yeah, four down. So uh, we get out there. Skywall Mo, if you must know. <laughs> the first fight is me and Pat, who's like five foot two, right? So here I am, you know, I just got back to play college football, and I'm like, Pants right here. The first fight we fight, David R. Draco. And just make this real quick, I'm sorry. And, and we fight, 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 fight. Finally, you know, we end up like we were. Well, the next fight is a couple of these East, East Tennessee boys, Hagen, Hagen, <laughs> Hagen and Forth with, fight these other two dudes, and they just go, ah! And they rush at them and they pull, push them out of the circle, and everybody's going, can you do that? Can you do that? And Harold and Thor, Thorvald? Thor Thorkell. Thor Thor Harold and Thor, yeah, I should know that because Harold and Thorkell. So yeah, yeah, that's right. And I said, big dumb me, you know, I said, man, I'm 350 pounds. We just made this a shoving match. <laughs> so 
So from then on, if it was my turn to have the shield, that, you remember the shield Robert told you about earlier, the one three quarter inch plywood, five foot long, three foot wide? That was my shield. <laughs> With nothing for me back then, I turned sideways and pushed him out. And I turned to have the full armor, turned this sideways, pushed off three of them out. <laughs> we were in the tournament. The cash shop was, I've been in the SCA seven years. I've never won a tournament, I've never sat at a hit table. Do not get used to this. I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. It's easy, yeah, it's easy. I like it. Well, the tournament's over with, and they said, uh, well, one of the fights at Mother said, you know, you just killed the Crown Prince. And I said, oh, was that Orlando? They said, no, Olaf, the Crown Prince of Orlando. I'm like, cool. Well, we get on and Olaf comes over, my like, Lord, would you care to fight? I'm like, yeah, sure, man, whatever. So we get out there and I'm like this, and like, bing! He's fighting two stick, right? Olaf was a Golden Gloves boxer in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he showed my big redneck butt what was going on. <laughs> so, so, John Bear Killer, Patrick Shaw, and of course, uh, the first crown list I ever wanted to see was, was the one that Richard won for Ella, and that was a, a great inspiration and an, an idea of what to strive for. Robert? My hero has always been my knight, Robert Hightower. And mm. he's a, I'm in a direct line, Robert Hightower to John Bearkiller. John Bearkiller's first king I ever saw. He's always been one of my heroes. Now, as people tell you, John and I don't always see eye to eye, as, <laughs> as grandchildren sometimes don't. Uh, but he's been a great friend and mentor to me my entire SCA life, and, uh, and Robert too. And, uh, and then I've got to throw Francois in there since he was part of our family tree, uh, who absolutely, Rosman says it better, words fail when it comes to the superlative nature of that man's character. And uh, I, the nicest guy I've ever met who could crush your skull. <laughs> and, uh, I, absolutely, just a, a paragon of chivalry. So I've been very, very lucky. We only got about two or three minutes left. We got a vacate, right, Hill? Oh, <laughs> I mean, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately we got a lot our, of meetings. our pleasure would be to sit here and listen to stories all day. But, uh, our duty is to, is go to and do have some, some meetings. So, very unfortunately, good. it's time for the, the meeting for the order of the Melvin Owl. Well, I believe we're done. Yeah. Thanks very much. I'm sorry we didn't get to all your questions, and I'm sure we can talk to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.